guys, I'm here at a different Walgreens. They have a ton of skincare at this particular store, along with some new Walgreens versions of some of our favorite skincare products. So let's check them out. Oh my goodness. This is new, the Regenerating Retinol Cream Fragrance Free Dupe of the Neutrogena one. Of course, $41.99, the Neutrogena one is not that expensive. Walgreens price gouging. Anyway, that's exciting to see. Um, the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Retinol Cream is one I've been recommending for many years. It is an effective formula with a sustained action, slow release retinol. And Neutrogena, you know, the Johnson & Johnson Company has a long-standing track record of effective formulas for retinol tested on actual patients in the clinical setting. Definitely helpful for improving wrinkles. Oh, they also now have a fragrance-free version of the old gel cream. Now, this is interesting because Neutrogena has discontinued their old gel cream. I currently use the water cream and love it. This one, it's different from the old gel cream in that it has natural moisturizing factors and ceramides, and it's a thicker consistency. But I did see some comments from some of you on my video reviewing it, along with their new water gel. Some of you said you missed the old formula. So check out Walgreens because they have the fragrance-free version of the old gel cream. Walgreens is really coming out with some new dupes here. We have the uh, exfoliating cleanser dupe of the Neutrogena one, also with fragrance. Fragrance in the Neutrogena cleanser was always very strong. Have you guys noticed they're kind of phasing out the strong fragrance in a lot of their products, like especially their sunscreens? This is a Walgreens version of the Sensitive Skin Oil-Free Lotion that I loved, but they discontinued it. So you can get the Walgreens version, but this is a great lightweight facial moisturizer for oily or dry skin. But as a side note, Target has the Up and Up Advanced Therapy Lotion, very similar to this fraction of the price. It's like under like 434 or something like that for a big bottle you can use it on the face and the body. Speaking of the Up and Up Advanced Repair, here's the Vaseline one. Now Walgreens, it looks like, has a version of it, the Advanced Repairing Body Lotion. So this is, this is Walgreens version, $6.99. Much cheaper to go with the up and up one. And I'm telling you, works great on the face as a facial moisturizer. And the Walgreens petroleum jelly is overpriced. Normally Vaseline is like $5.49 and the store version is always like, I don't know, $2.50 or something of that along those lines. But here at Walgreens, their store brand is as much as regular Vaseline in a normal store. Those of you who watch my vlogs, you know, I was at the AAD recently and I got a sample of this Vaseline Radiant. Um, was it this body cream? I believe so. And I actually really liked it. It has, I don't know if it was this body cream or if they have a lotion. Yeah, it was, I want to say it was a lotion. Really liked the lotion. It had niacinamide in it, which is good for the moisture barrier. It did have fragrance, but it wasn't like headache inducing. It was kind of pleasant. Friendly reminder not to put Q-tips in your ears. You just push the wax back further and pack it, potentially damage your hearing and cause inner ear infections. Now let's ch come check out the body care products. So I just filmed a video for you guys on shower oils and I talked about this and I looked up the price and it's like $13.49 at Walmart, on Amazon, here, 17 bucks. But I really like this body oil. It's also, you can also get it on iHerb for like $13.49. I really like this body oil to help with uh, water resistant sunscreen on the body. You smear it on and then step into the shower carefully. Don't slip and it helps the sunscreen come off more easily. Uh, I'm currently using this anti-dandruff shampoo and I really like it from Shea Moisture. It's salicylic acid which is really good for helping to control the buildup of flakes. It's also really good if you have scalp buildup like you use a lot of styling products that build up on the scalp and the hair strands. Um, I, I rather enjoyed it. It also has niacinamide which is anti-inflammatory and can help the moisture barrier of your scalp 
I also have used this. Now this is a really good product. If you have dandruff, but you have more of a textured hair type that does not tolerate frequent shampooing, try this out. It's a salicylic acid leave-in. It's a little too rich for my hair. Kind of weighs it down a bit. Probably the castor oil. But if you're a hair type that tolerates castor oil type things, try this out because it's really good. It has a really nice scent. Very mild, very gentle. I like it. This is my all-time favorite these days, hair mask. It is so luxurious. Yeah, when you scoop it out, you can see it has this elastic like texture to it. It really does an excellent job enveloping all of the hair strands. It feel it leaves my hair feeling like I've had some luxe treatment in my hair. Not that I've ever really had that, but I want to try the Simply Clean shampoo and conditioner in this line because I've been happy with this. They have some other hair mask, I believe, in this line too that I want to give a try, but I'm not seeing it here. And I love the fact that they didn't put methyl isothiazolinone in that line. L'Oreal um, Paris, like the Ever Pure Purple Shampoo, I've used this, it's quite good, but it has methyl isothiazolinone in it, which is a preservative that people frequently become allergic to, so I try and avoid it. And I saw these Kitsch, products on Amazon, like on my suggested, and I didn't get time to look at them. Solid shampoo. I'm always kind of skeptical of these because I do think they can, like shampoo bars, often can end up leading to a buildup because they don't usually have chelating ingredients. Willow bark is anti-inflammatory. Tea tree um, may help with dandruff, but it can be irritating. Coconut oil is good for the hair. Rice water, really popular for hair as well. I have a video on that. They also have it as a shampoo. Yeah, the shampoo bars, they can end up leading to um, a lot of poor hair manageability. Anything good in the baby section? Usually some good gems here. Baby oil is just mineral oil with fragrance. And you can buy straight up mineral oil and use it on the skin like before a shower. It's a great moisturizing product because it's immunologically inert, like your immune system does not react to it. So if you have really sensitive skin, it's a great option. But uh, it penetrates down through the stratum corneum a bit, so it really helps to create a semi-occlusive barrier to reduce water loss, prevent irritants from getting in. It's great if you have eczema to use it before getting in a bath or a shower or to add some to the bath. It can potentially help cut down on dryness. Baby oil, they just take mineral oil and add fragrance to it. And so, you know, if you are, if you do have atopic dermatitis, just be aware that fragrance can potentially be a problem. This is way too bougie for a baby. I really like this product, the Stella Topia Lipid Replenishing Cream. It's a really nice, rich moisturizer. Great for sensitive skin. Has sunflower seed oil in it, which is really good for um, atopic dermatitis as an emollient. I need to get more La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Gel. I'm just about out. And I went on Amazon and it's no longer on Amazon. I don't know, I guess they sold out. <laughs> um, this is a newer sunscreen for body and face with cooling property SPF 30. Alcohol denaturant does help make sunscreens fast absorbing and non-greasy. I wonder if that burns around the eyes at all. Most of their sunscreens in my experience do not burn around the eyes. Always coming over here and checking, hopefully that there will be some new fragrance-free antiperspirant launched, but instead we just get more renditions of coconut, lime, avocado. Gentle man's total body. You know, there's a trend for all over body deodorant um, and antiperspirant. You do have to be careful because antiperspirant can be irritating in general, but especially to large areas. I, I have videos on excessive sweating that delves more into potential causes, but there are effective treatments. Okay, so here's what I was getting at, the whole body deodorant. Aluminum free, so deodorant does not have aluminum. Aluminum's antiperspirant deodorant is deodorizing. Antiperspirant slows down sweat, which otherwise would get broken down and lead to body odor. 
So this is one of those deodorants. Most deodorants are just fragrance, but this one does not have fragrance. Instead, it has lactic acid. The idea here is that the lactic acid may help with the skin pH, ultimately helping to normalize the microflora there and help cut down on the types of bacteria that break down sweat and lead to odor. You know who really pioneered this type of product and sold it to the masses, made them believe that it was necessary, is that Lumi brand. Check out my video reviewing it from a few years ago. Everything I say in that video is still relevant. But the idea that like we constantly need to be deodorizing ourselves is just sort of far out. Gillette came out with a pre-shave exfoliant. Now, using just a basic cleanser before shaving gently, can help to smooth the skin surface, cutting down on the buildup of dry skin that would potentially trap hair as it grows in and lead to ingrown hairs. Plus, when you use a gentle cleanser before shaving, it helps hydrate the hair. They swell and they're easier to cut. And that reduces the risk that you will cut the hair in such a way that it has a sharp point and is more likely to pierce the neighboring skin and cause an ingrown hair. However, you do need to be careful when it comes to using exfoliants. I'm guessing this is some kind of mechanical exfoliant with sea salt, yikes. Um, because what can end up happening is you end up you're exfoliating and then when you shave, that's exfoliating. So you can end up getting razor burn doing something like that. Just a mild cleanser lathered will help smooth the skin enough and also hydrate up the, the hair strands. Oh look, Shea Moisture has jumped on the whole body deodorant train with their product, which likewise, this one has fragrance. It also has a lactic acid. I mean, it's funny that they have this whole body deodorant cream, but we also have had lactic acid moisturizers for years. I caution though, you have to be careful. Lactic acid can end up being irritating in the skin folds, such as under the arms, in the groin area, between the buttocks, where people are, you know, motivated to use these. What the heck, a Manuka honey and retinol? This is something that could potentially be irritating for sure retinol plus antiperspirant is that really retinol yikes you know this is marketed in such a way to appeal to people who are seeking to improve the look of dark underarms be careful because a lot of stuff that targets hyperpigmentation is poorly tolerated in the skin folds under the arms leads to a lot of irritation retinol especially and with that, you end up actually worsening hyperpigmentation. Not to mention, there are a lot of potential reasons to have dark underarms. One of them is not actually hyperpigmentation, but rather skin thickening. It's called acanthosis nigricans, sign of insulin resistance. I have a whole video on that. Also, you can have uh, skin infections under the arms that um, look like dark discolored patches. And so you wanna be careful to not just, you know, try things. So I'm not such a fan of, um, retinol onto the arms. A much safer option, in my opinion, is to use a basic moisturizer that has niacinamide. Niacinamide tends to be well tolerated in the skin folds, and not only does it help with hyperpigmentation because it slows down the spread of pigment from the pigment producing cells to neighboring skin cells, but it also helps improve barrier function, cutting down on irritation. So in my opinion, that is a much better um, cosmetic type product to pursue under the arms or anywhere where you have skin folds and a lot of hyperpigmentation. Of course you can become irritated by anything, but it's not as likely as like straight up retinol or glycolic acid or lactic acid, which a lot of people are, are trying to do to lighten dark underarms. Even though lip smackers can definitely lead to a, an irritant lip chelitis quite easily via the flavorants, I'm so glad they still exist because they're so cute. <laughs> Um, I love this whole Easter set. This is the kind of thing I always feel the need to buy, but have to restrain myself. 
you guys see that Walgreens now has a version of CeraVe's Renewing Vitamin C Serum? This is a pretty good, the CeraVe one at least, is a pretty good drugstore vitamin C serum. It's ascorbic acid. It doesn't have, um, it doesn't have ferulic acid in it, but it's, it's pretty good. It has ceramides. I, I found it didn't irritate my skin. I don't enjoy using vitamin C serums though. Walgreens version is $19.99. Now I know in a regular store, that the CeraVe vitamin C serum is not even that expensive. <laughs> Walgreens is on some BS, if I do say so myself. So Neutrogena came out with a new mineral uh, face liquid, SPF 30. This is really nice. I've been trying it out over the past month or so and I really like it. It's really nice and lightweight, non-greasy, at least a slight white cast, but not too bad. And it's great as a base for makeup. And it's water resistant 80 minutes. But my all time favorite, that's great, but I love, love, love the tinted, the UV tint. This is really good. When it first came out, it was like $18, but it's come down in price. Oh, this is underrated. Ichthamol, if you have any kind of itchy, uh, weepy rash, um, Ichthamol is very soothing. Uh, like if you have dishydrotic hand eczema and it's super itchy, try this out. It, it gets rid of the itch like very, very quickly. Also good for bug bites. If you have angular chelitis and overgrowth of candida yeast at the corners of the mouth, uh, clotrimazole can help heal that. Um, some people mistake it as having chapped lips, so that painful cracks at the corners of the mouth, but it can be related to the candida yeast that live in your mouth naturally. Um, also exacerbated by like drooling or poorly fitted dentures. So um, clotrimazole can help heal that via targeting that yeast candida. It's not actually particularly good for ringworm though. Walgreens has their version of Aquaphor here. Your jaw is gonna drop at how much Aquaphor healing ointment is here. $9.99 for 1.75 ounces. Stop, just stop. This looks good though, the petroleum jelly in a tube. That looks handy for on the go. Petroleum jelly is so versatile. It's so versatile. I recently came across a TikTok, not in the realm of skincare or beauty, where a food stylist was using it on a hamburger bun uh, to make it look more appetizing, <laughs> I guess. This is a really good option if you have itchy skin. They have this one with menthol um, and promoxin. So promoxin is an anesthetic that helps to calm down the little nerves that lead to itch. Menthol kind of distracts those itch nerves, although if you have fragrance allergy, you have to watch out. That being said, Sarna has a, um, a sensitive skin one, I think it's called, that does not have menthol in it. This Dermend one is so expensive, $31.99 for the Promoxin. You know, CeraVe has an itch relief uh, cream and lotion with Promoxin in it, much less expensive compared to this. You may prefer the consistency of this, but honestly, I would just go with either Sarna or, or even the Walgreens version as opposed to this. This brand is like really expensive, Dermend. They're like under the same umbrella company that makes HelioCare, which is a dietary supplement, polypo polypodium, that um, potentially can help reduce the burden of sun damage when you're out in the sun. Check out my video on it. I talk more about it. Some people mistake it as like a dietary supplement that replaces sunscreen. It's certainly not that, but it may be helpful for people who have um, photosensitivity along with, especially people who have polymorphous light eruption. I'm going on a tangent here, but check that video out. Yeah, like here's this other product, moisturizing bruise formula with ceramides, retinol, and arnica oil. Arnica is not proven to help with bruising. It's frequently pursued in that regard. It's a homeopathic. It, it really hasn't been shown to be useful, truthfully, for anything. Ceramides, which are good for the moisture barrier. You wanna know how much this is? Granted, it does have retinol in it, which can help with, um, you know, I'm, I'm guessing this is marketed for people who have dermatoporosis, which is like osteoporosis of the skin, um, age-related, sun damage-related, skin thinning to the point where you have significantly easy bruising on the backs of the hands. 
used to be called senile purpura, which I don't think is very friendly terminology. But all that to say, uh, this, guess how much this is? $36.99 for four and a half ounces. Check it out, you guys. Walgreens has a hypochlorous spray. So hypochlorous acid is good for um, potentially helping to cut down on the burden of bacteria on the skin surface that can cause problems for people. I personally find it most useful as someone with atopic dermatitis for reducing sweat-induced itch. It has been shown to be helpful for calming down itch in patients who have atopic dermatitis. $12.99 here at Walgreens. I buy a, a hypochlorous acid spray on um, Amazon that I think is comparable to that price-wise by Skin Smart. Now, Hibiclens, whether it be name brand or store brand, is chlorhexidine. It is a topical antiseptic. This is another thing that you can use under the arms to help cut down on the bacteria that break down sweat and lead to body odor. So it could be used as a deodorant. Silicone scar sheets definitely are evidence-based for improving the final appearance of raised or thickened scars. Alternatively, you also can use the scar gel. There's Scar Away, there's the Walgreens brand. It definitely can work. The sooner you start using it and the, the more consistently you use it, the better. So you need to use it daily um, in order to see improvement. But it can soften, reduce redness, and importantly, it can reduce the symptoms of itch. Scars can definitely be symptomatic and itchy. So this can help. The other thing you want to do, of course, is protect from the sun. Sun messes up wound healing, worsens scars. Now, Mederma, their advanced scar gel, I believe, has some sort of onion extract in it, which, um, you know, to what extent that, yeah, onion bulb extract. I think there's one small study looking at this. Didn't really seem to make much of a difference. Um, Allantoin is moisturizing, though, and a skin protectant. But I would go with silicone, that's more evidence-based. All right guys, Walgreens did not disappoint. They had a lot of great new finds in here. I hope you enjoyed this Walgreens Shop With Me video. On the end slide, I'm going to put my last Walgreens Shop With Me video, so check that one out if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.